Well, you know, really <clears throat> not a whole lot more than what's out there uh, on the injury front. Uh, to me, it, it sounded like a pretty positive thing when Sirianni said on Monday that uh, uh, he expects some of these guys to be ready to go on Sunday. I'll get into it more later on, but I want to maximize our time with uh, Ed Kratz, Eagles Today, who Tone has let me know has joined us, and there he is. Uh, Ed Cafe Kratz, cooking up some espresso. Good morning, sir. How are you today? Morning, Rick. Good to see you. Hey, uh, always a pleasure. I know um, we gauged the thermometer or the temperature last week uh, on the injury front before the Jaguars game. The Eagles a little bit banged up, uh, leaving and departing. I know uh Sariani said he would have more on the injury updates today any kind of rumblings any kind of news that you could tell us Tyrese Robinson was signed to the practice squad does that mean they're a little bit uh questionable with say Amalu there on the interior what are you hearing from the uh birds front on the injury report well you know really <clears throat> not a whole lot more than what's out there uh on the injury front uh, to me it, it sounded like a pretty positive thing when Sirianni said on Monday that uh, uh he expects some of these guys to be ready to go on Sunday I, I would think that might mean Avante Maddox uh who kind of uh, twisted his ankle in practice on Thursday so now he's I, I would think he might be ready to go uh you know uh, Darius Slay said in the locker room to me afterward that he was fine not sure why he couldn't return if he was fine. Um, Malata might be a, a little bit bigger of an issue, and maybe even Jake Elliott. Although I talked to Elliott afterward in the locker room, I went up to him. He was nobody was near him, so I asked him a few questions, and he said he was fine. But you know, these players say they're fine, and then you know they're, they're playing doctor here, so they have to leave that decision to the medical people. They want to get out there and play. Um, but you know, I would think Malata might be the most serious of the injuries with the shoulder. Uh, if it popped out and it looked like the way he was running off the field that he was kind of hanging down a little bit. And if it got, you know, dislocated or popped out, I mean, that could be a, a season long situation unless you get it fixed. Um, I guess the good news there, if he doesn't play is Andre Dillard. And I know people aren't really, you know, there's a lot of people that don't think Dillard's very good. I think he's a, a good player. Uh, he's not at Mulata's level, but, you know, Dillard could come off the IR maybe this week. We've seen him do some things uh, during practice with just rehabbing and he, and he looks OK, like, you know, it was a fractured forearm. Um, so we'll see. But that that would kind of be the silver lining, so to speak, as Dillard could step in at left tackle. That's why he's here. That's why they didn't trade him. They wanted that insurance in case hap something happened to Milata. And then you talk about Siamalu and the ankle. You know, he limped off. He looked OK. I don't think there's any serious damage there. He's another guy that will probably be limited this week that's going to try to fight through that and uh, be ready to answer the bell on Sunday. If not, Pitt is going to be the guy. Uh, we saw him come in and I think it was 20 snaps he played against Jacksonville. Had a really nice block on the touchdown run, the five-yard touchdown run by Sanders there in the fourth quarter. Uh, the Eagles like him. I think he's a little inconsistent personally, um, but you hope Stoutland can kind of – get him closer to being more and more consistent if he has to play an entire game. Uh, I'm not sure how much help Tyrese Robinson's going to be uh, just signing him. I, you know, they have Josh Sills as well uh, yeah. on the active roster. I mean, he's probably a little further more along in the system with Jeff Stoutman. Uh, so I would think he would kind of be the next man up before Robinson would get the call up. But, you know, who knows? And, you know, we're still early in the week, so we'll find out more as we go along. Yeah, next man up is how Sariani phrased it yesterday, and he mentioned uh, specifically Opeta. Yeah. You know, he, he's the next guy up in the system, as you said, Ed, and um, he started in that playoff game last year. Sariani says he has faith in both of them, but I like the fact that he basically said Cam Jurgens is in a redshirt year, essentially just mirroring Jason Kelsey, which, again, we talked about the luxury of the depth and – Dillard now is looking like a fantastic move holding on to him. Uh, he did say he's attacking the rehab. It didn't exactly give a timeline. Hopefully you get an update later on today. But we talked about the luxury of the depth of the offensive line, and we're starting to see that here. Also, I would imagine, you know, today is, is rodeo day. And for those of you at home that don't know what I'm talking about, it's the gong show that, that we call it in the NFL where you're allowed to bring in street free agents and work them out. I think today 
will be telling in terms of how serious Jake Elliott's injury is because Sirianni said, we'll be uh, ready either way. You could read that, take it for whatever it's worth. Well, I'll take it for whatever it's worth. How many kickers are visiting the facility today, Ed, right? If, if yeah. there's some kickers on the visits, then Elliott's uh, uh, injury could be a little bit more serious. And, and just to spend some time on special teams, because I saw – Tyrese Robinson took the spot of Brenton Covey on the practice squad. Covey gets elevated to the 53 man. Looks like he is going to be the return main returner for the short term anyway. Yeah. I mean, really what other options do the Eagles have? I mean, you could say Kenny Gainwell, uh, you know, he really hasn't done it. Uh, but Devontae Smith has such a big workload on offense. I know they threw him back there in a high leverage situation against uh uh, I guess it was Washington uh, the week before, uh, but you don't want him having to return five punts and, you know, playing 90% of the snaps on offense here. I mean, it's a big workload. It's a lot of hits that he's going to have to absorb. We saw him kind of limping on the sidelines at one point during that game, but he was able to shake it off and re and return. So you don't want to use him. So they, they really don't have any other options, Rick, in my opinion, other than, Britton Covey and you know I know people are down on Covey maybe it's because he hasn't returned to to the house yet in the first four weeks I don't know there's a real high expectation level <laughs> to be the next right. Darren Sproles I guess but I mean listen this kid you know he's a rookie an undrafted rookie at that um, who's still kind of feeling his way along and learning how the Eagles play special teams you know he told me in the locker room afterward he said they told him if the ball is kicked end over end and go ahead and field it if it's just a straight you know, spinning ball to just let it, let it bounce. And that's kind of what he did. So, you know, he catches the ball. I know he had the muff against Washington, but you know, he, you, you got to kind of grow with this guy. I mean, he's not, you know, Devin Hester or some of these great returners that have passed through the league. He's not Brian Mitchell or, you know, any of these guys, not yet, but I think he can, if the Eagles block and it's not just Covey, right. You have to be able to block on the punt return. You know, if you're not getting the blocking, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to get what you can get and get down or get out of bounds or, or get walloped. And we've seen Covey get walloped a few times. So, yeah. you know, you got to be patient with the kid. I think he's probably entrenched now. He's been added to the 53. I know if Dillard comes off IR, they're going to have to cut somebody. And, you know, I'm not sure who that might be. Um, but I don't think it'll be Covey. I think he is – they're going to grow with this kid, and they're going to see what he can do week in and week out. I liked how they used him on the kickoff return, too. He did a pretty good job there, I thought. Yeah, I mean, listen, you can't have studs at every single <laughs> position, right? That's true. That's true. You know, and, and Covey, they call him the, the human crash test dummy, and Michael Clay even said, like, yeah, he's taking some big hits, but the, the teammates just feed off – the way he bounces up like nothing. Yeah. The teammates love it. And I think Kobe fits the whole mantra that Sirianni preached, tough, gritty, hard-nosed, uh, underdog, right? Yep. I mean, he he fits the whole Eagles DNA and mantra. So I, I'm with you. Let it ride. See what it, We'll see what the kids got. I mean, it's only four games. And to your point, uh, Michael Clay, I know, actually threw a little bit of praise towards uh, Zach Paschal for his blocking on the punt return, I believe. So Pascal maybe not getting the targets, but getting the job done a little bit on special teams. We got Ed Kratz here, Eagles Today, SI.com. The content is flowing over there. Uh, he'll be down at the Eagles presser, taking off after this interview. Let me get your thoughts with the Dougie P reunion. It seems like every week uh, there, there's a new reunion tour. This week is uh, Zach Ertz. Yeah. But, of course, uh, Doug Peterson came into town. He showed the appreciation. Yep. Eagles fans showed him love as they should. They got out to the big, fast start. And then, uh, you know, I said it yesterday. They had Trevor Lawrence with his head on a swivel. Another job well done, both on the offensive and defensive side, playing some complete football. What were your takeaways? Well, yeah, you talk about the, uh, you know, this – home homecoming tour that the Eagles are on, you know, if Zach Ertz, if the Cardinals were coming to Philly, he'd be another one that would get the applause from the fans. He's one of the more popular Eagles that have, uh, has ever played here in recent memory. Of course, Kelsey and, you know, some of these other guys that are still on the team, Brandon Graham, but Ertz was wildly popular and, you know, it was very good of him and the, and the Cardinals PR to kind of set us up with an interview on Monday, a uh, virtual interview uh, to, to talk. I mean, you know, kudos to, to him and to the staff over there in Arizona for doing that. But, um, you know, my, my big takeaway from Sunday's win, Rick, was just adversity, you know, overcoming adversity and ball security. 
You look at Trevor Lawrence, fumbled the ball four times, didn't play a good game at all, couldn't even get the snap down. I mean, it was miserable out there. And yet the Eagles didn't, uh, you know, they didn't lose a single fumble. Uh, I don't think they dropped the ball at all, uh, in fact. And that's very impressive. Very impressive in those weather conditions. Um, you know, and then the force five turnovers from the Jags. I mean, I think it was the first time they had five in a game since playing the Raiders on Christmas Day back in 2017. I mean, that doesn't happen very often. Neither do the nine sacks like they had against Washington. So this defense, to me, that's a big takeaway is, is each week they're doing things to impact the game, uh, and, and especially Hassan Reddick. I mean, his goal every game is to go out there and make one play that impacts the game and he made two I mean he had two strip sack fumbles in the fourth quarter you know when it was still a game I mean this wasn't you know tucked in the wind column like Minnesota and Washington were you know you never got a sense that that 24 whatever lead was gonna be threatened but the Jags were hanging in there and they made the big play 45 yards that led to their touchdown that pulled them to 29 21 but Reddick you know, he made that strip sack under two minutes and the Eagles got it. Javon Hargrave fell on it. And that was the end of the hope the Jags had. The Eagles were able to run out the clock. So big takeaway, ball security in the rain and a defense that just each week continues to do things that you just don't see very often. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to see another Eagle uh, defensive player of the week this week with the yeah. Reddick, right? You really uh, could. I mean, he had that kind of game and that would be following up on Slay winning at week two and Graham week three and now Reddick yeah. week four. But we'll see. I think that comes out Wednesday morning. Yeah, two two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, two sacks for Reddick. Oh, by the way, that hasn't been done since 1950. Oh, <laughs> you know? I didn't know that. Yeah, I got stats for days, Eddie Kratz. And Trevor <laughs> Lawrence is the first quarterback to lose four fumbles this century. I think it's happened the last time in 1991. So yeah. another good defensive performance. I know you got to get out of here soon. What did you take away from the Ertz interview? Will, will you have an article up on that later today? Or Yeah, we, I had one up actually last night on Ertz, and I'll, I'll probably write something else on Ertz because Eagles fans can't get enough of Ertz. Um, but listen, just for the record, Rick, I want to say I was not at that 1950 game when you – know, <laughs> so your audience knows, okay? I wasn't there. Um, but, uh, yeah. Howard was, though. <laughs> Howard Balzer may have been, yeah. He, he probably wrote about that. But, uh, yeah, uh, oh, Ertz, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, you can't write enough Ertz. My takeaway from Zach Ertz was he still has very strong ties to uh, to this Philadelphia area. He's building the House of Hope down there on Hunting Park Avenue. It, he's hoping that it will be open by 2023, which will help provide kind of enrichment programs for, you know, disadvantaged uh, families in the community. Uh, he's raised his uh, Earth's Family Foundation has raised one point two million dollars for that operation. Wow. Uh, they've completely gutted the house that was there. So listen, this guy, you know, he, he he's a big cog in the community still in Philadelphia. He still knows a lot of guys in Philly. Obviously, he he played with Hertz for about a year and a half. He didn't want to make any comparisons between Hertz and Kyler Murray. You see some comparisons between those two quarterbacks. But, you know, he said they're both you know, two of the most competitive players I've ever been around. So, uh, you know, Hurt said a lot. And, you know, I'll probably I put the one story up last night. I'll probably have another one later today as well on Zach Hurts. All right. Of course, Eagles today, SI.com. Ed Kratz here. We got to get you out of here. It's only Tuesday, so I know you reserve the right to change your opinion, Eddie. But Eagles opened up as a touchdown favorite in this one on the road, in the desert. They usually struggle with that cross-country trip. Uh, does the luck keep on rolling here uh, for the Eagles? What's your prediction? Well, I, I remember Hertz made his second career start in Arizona, and that was just a great back and forth. Him and Kyler Murray uh, really went at it, you know, in the air. And, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to that kind of game. But the Eagles defense, I think, is better than it was back, you know, in 2020. Um, sure. It should be anyway. So, you know, I, I like the Eagles to – Boy, I hate to say they're going to go five and zero. I mean, I I certainly didn't predict that when I had my pencil out picking the W's and L's when the schedule came out. I didn't have them at four and zero. I don't think uh, five and zero. I mean, it's just when you when you look at it that way, it just seems like boy, they're, they're going to lose sometime. I just don't see it happening this Sunday. I don't. I think they'll. They're, it's going to be a tough game. I like the resiliency the Eagles showed against Jacksonville coming back from 14 nothing. I like the resiliency they showed in Detroit in front of a very hostile crowd yeah. uh, hanging on to that win. So they, they show that they can handle adverse moments, and there will be some on Sunday. 
I just think they're going to find a way to get it done. I, I don't know what the score is going to be. I don't know if I'd pick them to cover that touchdown spread or whatever it is. I think it opened yeah. at five. Not sure I would cover that, but I think the Eagles find a way to win. It's interesting. They're the only undefeated team. They got to lose at some point. They're, yeah, they're uh, not going 17 and 0. That's for sure. Well, they're over under win total, by the way, over there at the Ocean Casino. Uh, went from nine and a half, as you know, preseason is now 12 and a half over wow. under on the win total. So, <laughs> Big uh, you know, Cardinals could be a trap game. We got the yeah. Cowboys uh, next week on the docket. We'll see you next Good week point. for Jason Peters week. <laughs> it just keeps going, doesn't it? It's crazy. Wow. Eddie Kratz, always that. a pleasure, my man. Yeah. All right, Rick. Thanks, bud.